Shabbat Shalom. Today we have a parsha Ba'it Hanan. I saw it. It's from Devarim 3 23 to 7 11. So I read this from the Torah, met, uh, Torah portion of Daniel Ben Yaakov. So the Torah portion today. Let's start to read. This Pasha goes on with Moshe speaking to the children of Israel before he dies. Remember, it is the last month, Devarim 1 3. We saw in the last Pasha that Moshe spoke to the generation who were not born in Egypt or under 20 years old at the time they left Mitzrayim, Egypt. It seems good to Elohim to bring all the Torah into remembrance. We see that Jehovah is long-suffering with his people. This Parsha is also a promise from Jehovah to his people to be with them if they keep the Torah. We should also have in mind that these words are also for us today. To keep the Torah today is to stay under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91, 1. Unfortunately, Christian tradition coming from the teaching of the mother of harlots, the Roman Catholic Church, has rejected the Torah by making a savior who does not consider the Torah to be kept. This is the great delusion written by Shaul to the Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3 to 12. Today in the year 2012, Jehovah has already started to call his people out of the world system to return to the Torah and walk in the truth. Every day in the four corners of the earth, people open their eyes to the truth. Psalm 119, 142, 151, 160. Before we start, I want us to see the duality of the scriptures between the Pishat, the literal, and the sword, secret or mystery. The wording of the text reveals what Yeshua is speaking as a prophet. We are now in the last month of the last years of the 40 years. If you remember, I explained in another Parsha how the 40 years in the wilderness are a um, microcosm of the 2,000 years between the first advent of Yeshua, Moshiach, and his second advent to establish the kingdom of the Father. 40 years in the wilderness times 50 length of one new veil 7 times 7 years equals 50 and overall equals 2000. Now the wording tells us something which brings the Torah alive in us. Moshe was not able to enter the promised land and Yehovah told him to choose Yehoshua a shadow of Moshiach to come to enter the promised land. Deuteronomy 3.28 But change Yehoshua son of Nun and encourage him and strengthen him for he shall go over before his people and he Yehoshua shall cause them to inherit the land which they shall see. Now let us try to read in the following verses. Deuteronomy 5.2 Yehovah our Elohim made a covenant with us, our forefathers, in Horeb. Jehovah made not his covenant with our, our fathers, but with us, believers today, even us who are all of us here alive this day, 2000, now we are 2018. Can you see it was now 40 years, 2000 years, all those left Egypt, Mitzrayim, died in the wilderness because of their unbelief, save, except Caleb, son of Yeponit, and Yeshua, son of Noon, where our forefathers are they not they are dead in the wilderness no. since two thousand years? Is it enough to believe so called Jesus and reject the Torah? Do you think that Jehovah is a respecter of person? How do we prove that we believe Jehovah? Is it not by keeping commandments? First John, first Yohanan or first John two, three to six. The entrance in the promised land is done with the last generation and Moses' death. Are we not the last generation? 
Are we not those waiting for the soon coming of Mashiach Yeshua to bring us into the promised land? Why is it so? Moshe gives the answer. Yehovah did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. Because, But because Yehovah loved you, and because he would keep that oath which he had sworn unto our fathers, had Yehovah brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed us out of house of abundance from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, what is the promise to whom did Elohim made promise? So let's go to Genesis 15:8 and read. And he said, Sovereign Yehovah, whereby shall know that I shall inherit it. And he said unto him, Take me an hyper, hyper of three years old, and she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all this, and divided them in the midst, and laid, laid each piece, once again another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove away. And when the sun was going down, deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, an all horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a certainty that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four thousand years. And also that nation whom they shall serve, will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to the fathers in peace, thou shalt be buried in good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come, either again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and burning lamb that passed between those pieces, animals cut into parts in the sign of covenant. In the same way, Jehovah made a covenant with Abraham, saying, And to thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Kadumites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims. And the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and Jebusites. Jehovah will accomplish what he promised to our forefather, Abraham, confirmed to Isaac and Jacob. I will show you what beautiful things Jehovah embedded in his word. Yushua, son of Nun. The name of Yushua's father is Nun. It means Nun. Perpetui. Perpetuity. So continuous to sprout to sprout to sprout or be continued. Is it not beautiful? We could say, "You show the son of perpetuity who is who is sprout." Is it not here an allegory to our master Yeshua, son of Elohim, perpetual, the sprout of Jesse, the father of David, Moshe, chapter three twenty nine to three twenty nine. 23 to 29, Moshe called his plea to Jehovah to enter to go over to see the promised land. Jehovah was wrought with him and told him to charge. Yeshua, son of Nun, and to encourage him because he was chosen from Jehovah to lead the children of Israel after the Moshe departure. This question remains why Jehovah doesn't change his mind and let Moshe enter. The promised land. The answer lies in the duality of the Torah. First, we have the literal text and account of the deliverance of our of our forefathers, which was an event taking place in Moses' time. Secondly, and this is very important for us to understand, that the physical deliverance of our forefather is a picture of our spiritual deliverance and show us what is going on with our inner man. All their struggles are images of our own spiritual life. 
Our carnal man is under the influence of the world and shall explain how to overcome. And I say, walk in spirit and you shall not accomplish the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are opposed to each other so that you do not do what you, will, you desire to do. In these verses, we see the duality between the carnal nature and the inner man. Shaol explained very well why is it so. It has been for a long time overseen. Many books have been written concerning the Torah and the condition of the Torah under the new covenant. Many believers are still struggling to read the weekly Parsha because they don't understand why it is so important. They love the truth and follow many of the commandments but lack the efficiency of the Torah in their life for a simple reason. I am going to show that if we understand why we should read the Torah, we will have a new start in our life. Shaul speak to the Corinthians believers and explain concerning the resurrection of our master, Yehoshua. Let us have a look, look at it. For all, as, for us all die in Adam, the spiritual death, so also shall be made alive in Messiah. I will not take it out of context. I just want to make it easy to understand what was going on in this chapter. Shaul was speaking to the believers in Corinth because some believe that there is no resurrection. Shaul continues his midrash to explain the difference between the first Adam and the last Adam, Messiah Yeshua. Shaul goes on speaking about the different bodies and comes to the point to make the difference between the first Adam and the last Adam. So we go to 1 Corinthians 15.45 And so it has been written, The first Adam became a living being, natural man, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit, spiritual man. The spiritual, however, was not first, but the natural and afterward the spiritual. The first man, Adam, was of the earth, earthly. The second man, Yeshua, is the master from heaven.